Don't miss out. Get your free copy of Dr. Guido Holzman's How Inflation Destroys Civilization. Visit Mises.org slash issues free and we'll send you the book. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. In early September 2023, we reported on the producer price index, the PPI. This price statistic takes a back seat to the consumer price index, or the CPI, in media reporting and the policy setting agenda. Back then, we explained what it was and what it was telling us about the economy. The timing of that episode reflected our concern that the sharp drop in the PPI to that point in time might not be a sign of things to come. The PPI had been dropping since mid-2022. Regular listeners to this podcast will recall our regular discussions and doubts about the Fed's battle against inflation. So how does the PPI look six months later? Since the last episode on PPI, the decline has actually stopped, and the producer price index has leveled off instead of continuing its steep decline. Since the report of December 2023, the next three reports registered increases in the PPI. The latest monthly report shows an increase of 0.2%, which is actually less than the consensus forecast. However, on a year-over-year basis, comparing this month with the level 12 months ago, we saw the largest gain since April of 2023 indicating that pressures in consumer price inflation is building up in the pipeline or structure of the economy that stretches from the forests, mines, farms, and wells of the economy to the shelves of Walmart. Closer to our end of the pipeline, the prices of wholesale goods dropped 0.1% after rising 1.2% in February. But this decrease in the latest report is due to a 1.6% drop in wholesale energy prices. The drop in wholesale energy prices was somewhat offset by a big increase of 0.8% in wholesale foods. If you don't consider food and energy prices, the overall PPI was up only 0.1% for the month. Producer services, however, rose 0.3%, and the adjusted figure is even worse, the third straight monthly gain. Just for your information, the price of copper has been up 6% since the beginning of the month. Crude oil is up 2%. The producer goods pipeline that was driving the decrease in CPI inflation down from 9% to the level of 3 plus percent has clearly stabilized, as we suggested, and is less likely to contribute to the Fed meeting its 2% target. With categories like wage rates and the prices of services continuing to rise, how will the Fed reach its target short of throwing the economy into an economic crisis? The producer price pipeline is very wide and very deep with each stage of production for each consumer good having multiple stages and with its own array of pipelines and warehouses of inventories of inputs. That pipeline might now be stacked with gestating price increases for consumers, although nothing guarantees retailers and wholesalers that they will even get their money back or make a profit on those past purchases of inputs. If commodity food inflation spreads throughout the entire category, and if energy prices continue to strengthen the Fed's immaculate disinflation to get back to its target without wrecking the economy and the stock market is in serious doubt, especially with interest rates already heading higher and the price of gold at an all-time record high price. 